Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. You might notice today that we are not in my bedroom. We are at Timeless Tattoo in Hollywood, California. This is where I work. Connor Cade, my boss, owns this studio and he has really, really nicely let me film in here today because today I wanted to bring you guys along with me as I get two microdermal piercings on my face. <sighs> yes, we're doing this today. We're doing it. I'm gonna do this today. Our piercer here, Chris Saint, is going to be doing these piercings for me. Chris, while I am biased because he is my friend, I would say that he is one of the best piercers in LA easily. He's been doing this for more than 10 years and I trust him with my face. So when Chris gets here, I will have him explain exactly what microdermal piercings are and how they are done. I could probably try to explain it, but he can definitely do a better job. I'm also going to introduce you guys to at least one of the artists that works here. It's a Wednesday, so it's definitely a slower day. Not all of our artists are here today. That's why I chose to film today. I didn't want to bother anyone. So yeah, we're just going to get into it. I want to do a little tour of the tattoo shop before we get into the piercings as well. So let's get right into it. I'm already sweating. So this is the front area. This is where I mainly work. I work behind the front desk. Sometimes I'll help with stenciling, with the tattoos. I definitely put on some fire music and some TV for all the clients and the artists as well. This is where I spend most of my time. We also have this cool little piercing slash bone chest with these really cool pumpkin things on top. We have a lot of animal bones and I don't know what animals they are from. But yeah, so we have some cool piercing stuff here. Over here, we have a lot of art, a lot of really fun candles. We have our incense. I've become such a huge fan of incense. Here we have a bunch of stickers for people to take. People always love the stickers. And then behind this little partition, we have the tattooing space. So over to our right here, we have the piercing corner. This is Saint Piercing's domain over here. This is where he does everything. This is where I will be pierced later on. He has a bunch of cool stuff on his piercing station, like this chicken wing and this lovely art piece. Just past that, we have this bookshelf. This is full of really, really cool tattoo books from our owner as well as some of the artists. If I'm ever bored, I'll just look through these tattoo books. They're always really cool. We have an empty station right here. This is kind of just for like storage or if like guest artists come in, they can be here. One of our part-time artists, Rooster, tattoos here when he is in the shop. Rooster does the coolest work. I'm obsessed with some of his cathedrals. At the back right, we have Hypercat Station. Hypercat is at HPKT Tattoo on Instagram. He does incredible, incredible anime tattoos. Some of the coolest tattoos I've ever seen. He has the coolest clients. They're all convincing me to get into anime. So I think I'm gonna get into anime soon. In the back, we have a few rooms. We have a private place where people can get tattooed back there if they prefer. We have a bathroom. We have kind of like a wet room and then we have a storage room. And then to the left over here, we have Emily Geiger's station. Emily does incredible, incredible illustrative black work tattoos. She is constantly booked up. She is just an incredible, incredible artist. She makes just like the cutest stuff. She made this knit baby angel and I'm obsessed with it. She is so creative, really, really incredible, incredible artist. To the left of that, we have another empty station. This is also for guest artists or if we have a bunch of artists in one day. We do have a bunch of balloon animals here because one of the artists brought in a balloon animal kit the other day and we've all been making balloon animals, which has been actually really fun. And then finally to the left of that, we're back at the front. We kind of made a little like U around the tattooing space. And this station is Ash Grimm's station. I think Ash will be in here later. She is also an incredibly talented tattoo artist. She does a lot of really incredible work. So that is all for the tour of the studio. I really love working here. We have such a friendly, open, inviting atmosphere here. And I feel like that's something you don't necessarily get at every tattoo shop. Tattoo shops can definitely be a little bit intimidating, but I promise if you do come here get tattooed, get pierced, we're all really nice, welcoming and inviting people. So now that I've literally put this off enough, I think it is time to dive into the piercing. Nice. Okay, hello. Here I am with Chris Saint, celebrity piercer. So we're gonna do two microdermal piercings on my face and Chris is gonna explain to you guys what microdermal piercings are right now. 
Okay, the tiny, tiny little piercings that go half under the skin, half above the skin. And the little piece that goes under the skin is a little metal plate and it has two holes in it so that when the skin grows back, it grows through the holes and anchors it into your face. Microdermal anchor. Oh. It's gonna anchor it right in your face. I did not know that. Yeah. So what is the process for doing this sort of piercing? Uh, we grab the, the biggest needle we can and we push it down in your face twice. And then as we're pulling back up, my technique is it's a bit of a weird one. I like to turn the needle and make a little cut so it makes like a Kermit the Frog eye. So it doesn't, so you don't use as much force when you put the thing in, but. Cause we're trying, we're trying to get the jewelry in with hurting your skin as less as possible. Okay. Cause we don't want to bruise your face. Okay. I mean, I do, we don't. So one of our artists, Ash, is also here. So I thought she could just say hi really quick. Hi, I'm Ash. Um, I've been at the shop for about three years now. I actually did my apprenticeship here. I do a lot of like black and gray work. What's your favorite tattoo you've ever done? Probably the one I did on my mom. It's actually a cover-up. She had this really awful flower that I tattooed on her, and we covered it with more flowers. It's all black and gray doll work, so that's super cool. Thank you, Ash. You're welcome. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Sal from the future. I do have my hand over my face because I don't want to ruin the piercing reveal yet. But I did just want to pop in here to explain and narrate some of the piercing clips that you are about to see. I want to be that cloud from Mario Kart that just kind of like hovers. So maybe I will transform into that now. So here you see me being very nervous while Chris is setting up for the piercing. I feel like I get more nervous for piercings than I do for tattoos. So first things first, I know I had explained this entire video so far saying that I would be getting two piercings, but at this point I had already chickened out of that and we are only going to pierce my face one time in this video. We might do the other side another time depending on the healing process and how everything goes and i am actually really glad that i decided to just do one side and i will explain that a little bit more later on but for now let's get into the single piercing so right here chris is cleaning up the makeup that i had on my face i think he just used hand sanitizer for this but he was like it's mostly alcohol it works it's just gonna clean your skin and then he went in to mark where the piercing would be i had actually looked in the mirror prior to this and i made like a little indent with my nail on my cheek to tell him like where i want the piercing so here he is just lining it up with a little dot and then he had me go review it it's perfect <gasps> I thought that it was perfect, so we went along with it. If you ever do get pierced, feel free to move around that initial dot. It's not a hassle for the piercer if they don't get it perfect the first time, but I did feel good about the placement. So now we're getting into the actual piercing process. And before when Chris was explaining to me the two largest needles he has, like all that stuff, I literally thought he was joking but he was in fact not joking. So first things first, he puts the needle into the skin, creates some sort of like gap in the skin where he puts the anchor. So you can't see a lot of this, and honestly, you don't wanna see a lot of this. I have since looked up clips of dermal piercings, and I'm so glad I did not look up clips before I got this done, or else I would actually not be getting this done. Not that it's like super invasive, but I just hate like needles and stuff. So it would have just scared me out of getting it done. Hands down, the worst part of the piercing is what you're seeing right now, which is Chris putting in the jewelry into the anchor. And I don't know why this hurts so bad. I think they have to twist the anchor or something, but this was the worst part for me. I really hated it. Was definitely glad it was over once Chris said it was over. And I guess my eye was twitching a bunch as well when this happened. Oh, your eye is twitching like crazy. I know. What about if it never stops? <laughs> You're fine. Love that Chris just had to give me an existential crisis there. My eye kind of twitches a lot, so um, I'm not surprised that my eye was freaking out. He did tell me it probably would bleed, and oftentimes these piercings do bleed. So I was ready for that, and it was bleeding once I got the anchor in there. So here Chris is just cleaning up the blood, waiting for it to stop bleeding. So Chris had me stay laid down for a little bit just so that the blood could stop and that he could get the piercing very clean before I got up. All right, you mostly stopped bleeding. You wanna take a look at that? See if you love it? <sighs> You're gonna think it's too big, but it's good. Look at good. how much I sweat. Oh, that's so much sweat. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
She's a sweaty goyle. So I sweat a lot, and don't worry, I did clean that up. It does look a little bloody. Mm -hmm. oh, it's so cute. Damn, she a big boy. I love it. It's perfect placement, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, it looks super flat, which is what we want. Yeah, it's super flat on there. Damn. That's good. So this is just an awful camera angle. Sorry about that. So what Chris is doing is he's just putting a little bandage on. It's not like a band-aid, it's just like some paper towel and some tape. This is just to like hold the piercing into the skin. You look insane right now. I do. Oh, my eyebrow's gone. Did you wipe off my eyebrow? <laughs> I didn't touch your eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of my eyebrow's gone, sorry. Oh no. Chris a million percent wiped off my eyebrow, but I guess now I can remove my hand and you guys can see the piercing now. So as I'm recording this, I got pierced two days ago and it's settling into the skin really, really nicely. I have fully adjusted to the size of the jewelry. It definitely is bigger than I had anticipated going into it. It is possible to be pierced with something a tiny bit smaller than what I got, but Chris recommended this plate because the larger surface area helps the anchor stay put underneath your skin while it's healing. I did buy these tiny little opal gems that we are going to swap the plate out with once it's okay to do so, but for now I'm cool with the plate. It matches my nostrils and it matches like the color of the jewelry I wear on my ears, so I really, really love it. As aftercare goes, I'm trying to be as cautious as humanly possible with this piercing because it is so front and center in my face and I want it to heal perfectly if I can. So first things first, Chris put that little bandage on my face and I had that the whole rest of the day and then I slept with that on. The next morning, Chris took it off and then he cleaned around the piercing. There was still some dried blood and then we put on another bandage after that. The fact that I got rebandaged another day was kind of like an extra step you don't necessarily need to do that, but from now on, I only wear the bandage when I sleep. Like I explained before, you want the piercing to be pressed up against the skin as much as possible while it is healing. Sometimes with dermal piercings, they can heal a little high and that causes a gap between the gem and the face. So that's what we're trying to avoid. I'm trying my hardest not to get any makeup in or around the piercing. I have to be really careful when I wash my face or just when anything comes near my face, I don't want anything to get caught or touch the piercing at all. So I'm just trying to be as careful as possible. And the most difficult part so far has been sleeping for me. And this is why I'm so glad I only went with one dermal because I'm a side sleeper and I can't sleep on this side for right now. But I'm the type of sleeper that I want to sleep on both my sides. Like I like to switch it up in the night. So if I had both sides of my face pierced and I had to sleep on my back, that would just be infinitely more difficult for me. I'm not a back sleeper at all. So definitely glad I just went with one dermal. I really like how it looks on this one side. I definitely wanna see how it looks when it's fully healed and when I have other jewelry in it before I decide if I do wanna get the other side done. The piercing was a little sore the first day I got it, but nothing too bad at all. And then the piercing pain while I got it done was probably about a six out of 10, a little bit worse than my nostrils. My nostrils were probably about a five out of 10. So it's definitely manageable, but since it's so close to the eye, I feel like it feels like it's a little bit more intense. But yeah, I'm really happy with my dermal piercing. If you want to get a dermal piercing, I would recommend going to someone who has many, many years of experience doing these types of piercings. If you're in LA, you can definitely book with Chris Saint. I think he did an amazing job. I would definitely recommend him. The piercing is sitting really nicely just right on top of the skin. I've had no bruising at all, which is saying a lot because I bruise so easily. So everything is just going so, so well. And I will keep you guys updated when I do change out my jewelry. But for now, I have this microdermal piercing on my face. It's not a teardrop tattoo, which many of you thought it was when I posted on Instagram my bandaged face. I did not get a teardrop tattoo. It's just a good old microdermal piercing. 
But that is all I have for you guys on my dermal piercing experience. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Leave those down below in the comment section. But if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye everyone. Thank you.